Hey, I'm Russell. I'm in Leeds. It's just after the Jubilee. We're between the Sweden and Argentina games of the 2002 World Cup. And I'm here to meet Mark Collette, the leader of the Youth BNP, or British National Party, who is a student at Leeds University. Leeds, sort of a quite a multi-ethnic sort of a town. The student life at university is normally a time for a bit of liberalism. And Mark Collette has taken up the sabre of British nationalism. So, um, you know, I, I saw what, the reason I wanted to meet Mark was because I sort of read an article about him and he's obviously like a, an idealistic young man, you know, sort of a, he's got a strong sort of belief system and that's admirable, is it? No matter how disgusting his beliefs are or how, you know, how much they may repulse like the rest of us. So that's why we're here. Nazi boy. Do, 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 do. I don't think I know any racists. Well, I mean, if I do know any racists, I talk to them about racism or anything. I wonder what they're like. I wonder if they take sugar. I wonder if he's not so colour my ice not. Here he is. Security conscious. I don't know what he's afraid of. What's he doing in there? Putting out crucifixes, I shouldn't wonder. <laughs> Hi. Are you Mark? Yeah. Hey, I'm Russell. Hi, how you doing? I'm Grand, man. Nice, nice to meet you. Come in. Cheers, geezer. So this is your land? Yeah, take a seat. Cheers, man. Business and economics you're doing, isn't you? Business and economics, yeah. I've just finished today, it's my last exam. Cool. So, uh, uh, can, I, can I have a little look around the place then with you, mate? Can you show us yeah, around? Yeah, sure. Are you going to film? Yeah, 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 if that's alright with you. Well, that's cool kitchen. With you. There's no need going in there because it's just a mess. Oh, that's don't be shy work. about mess, mate. Hey, that's just human to make a mess. We all do well, that. It's not a, that's not a human mess. That's just this a, is subhuman. Is. The person that made <laughs> this mess is less than human, I believe, and should be treated as such. No, is this, was this just... I made the mess. You live here on your top, do you? No, I live here with my mate, but he's, uh, I think he's run away with his girlfriend because he's finished his exams. So I don't know when he's going to be coming back. You do, you do some boxing, do you? Um, I used to do kickboxing. Not too much at the moment, though, because of exams. Right, we do kickboxing. We thought if we couldn't talk you out of fascism, we'd just thrash it out of you. <laughs> Unlikely. Who's this dude? Uh, that's Ian Stewart. He used to sing in a band called Screwdriver, but sadly he's dead now. Somebody cut his brake cable. Who do you reckon did uh, that? Lefties or government, depending. Why would, it, why would the government do it? Well, every time a nationalist get a bit of a following, they always pull something naughty out of the bag. Don't they? Really? Well, somebody does, don't they? I mean, like, look at Mr Fortune in a... Holland. Pin Did Fortune. Holland? Was it Holland? Yeah, he was Dutch, yeah. wasn't he? Bang, you know what I mean? What, so you Six think... times in the head, battered. What, so you think it could be a conspiracy, Mark, by, from the government against... Well, every Holland. time, well, every time, um, look, the media and the government go hand in hand. Your radical left, your media, are basically just tools of the government. Every time we start doing well, the radical left come out and they start screeching from the sidelines and the media slag us off. Come on, you know what I mean? They, they claim to be revolutionaries. They're not revolutionaries, they're just stopping popular uh, advance of other parties. That's not very revolutionary, is it? I mean, right. when, Le Pen, when Le Pen's just about to go up against the, uh, what's his name, Chirac, you know yeah. what I mean? You think all the revolutionaries would do the revolutionary thing, instead they went and voted for a corrupt Tory boy. How right. revolutionary is that? Not very. They just uphold a, um, a dying system. So you believe there's a general conspiracy in favour of the left? Not a general, I don't say anything about a conspiracy. Basically, the corporations and the media have got everything mm. tied up for profit. Bled is what they tell them, so he gets his pocket filled. Yeah, and the yeah. left just protect the system by going around uh, doing their silly little marches. Silly, how come their marches are silly? And I bet you don't. Well, we don't have marches. We don't have start. marches. BMP never march. Why is that? Well, it's just unproductive. I mean, the last thing you want when you're trying to get to Marks and Spencers to get you a sand and a new bottle of wine is a load of people marching down the street stopping from getting there. Well, Instead of just going knock on people's doors and speak to them, because that's how people like to be treated. I think so. And I suppose that nationalism's history has got bad connotations with the old, on the old marching front, isn't it? Nuremberg, etc. Do you know what I mean? If you, sort of, if you see a bunch <laughs> yeah. of youths like, marching down the street, it you gives an intense that. impression. Especially yeah. if we're all wearing brown shirts. Yeah, I'd still, yeah, good to keep the, the wardrobe white and the ethnic policy white. So. <laughs> have a look, have a look. What, a, what a wacky guy you are. Thank you very much, man. Britain first. May I take? You can have it. Yeah, you can have it. Put British people first. Cut down on crime. Stop racist anti-white violence. Do you think that's quite a prevalent thing? Well, look, look, right. If you actually look, go to the Home Office website, you'll find out that um, there's 150,000 racist attacks every year in Britain and 111,000 against white people. Really? Yeah. Have you, uh, do you think, do you, have you ever felt that you've suffered racism 
yourself from like you know not that I'm aware of no not that I'm aware of not that you're aware of but there may have been secret racism <laughs> that's secretly occurring well no it's because it, it's simply like if you go for a job or whatever you might not know that you've not been selected but a lot of firms have to meet ethnic quotas so you might not get the job, you might not know directly why you did it, but you might have been qualified for it, but not got it, because I had to uh, give it to an ethnic. You never know when you're a victim of positive discrimination, because it's just a, a log in someone's book. I'm not talking about conspiracy or anything, I'm just talking about sensible what it is, you know what I mean? Right, right, yeah, fair enough, yeah, fair enough. Well, England expects. What do you think England expects of you, mate? Uh, well, England should probably expect more people to uh, join the BNP. <sighs> really? So listen, man, let me get my head around this. You're the leader. Of, of the, the young youth. BMP. You're the leader of the, the young, young BMP. BMP. Yeah. What does that entail for you? Basically, um, going around the country, meeting people, giving speeches, just doing stuff like that. What, what do you enjoy most about being leader of the youth BMP? Um, well, it's good fun. You meet a lot of nice people. You go around, you have a positive impact on people's lives. Are there any negative aspects to it? Certain lefties don't like me, but I'm not really bothered if those greasy freaks don't like me. <laughs> Greasy freaks, <laughs> lefties. If those, if those individuals choose to dislike me, I actually take it as a compliment rather than an insult. Really? When I, when I look at when I look at the car, the, the you know the fat sort of g curly ginger head ranks of the anti-Nazi league. You know, what I mean, it doesn't worry me that these people are slagging me off. In fact, if they were on my side, I'd have to seriously consider changing. Yes, we're at old Mark's house. We've had a little bit of a chat with him. So sort of, we're kind of comfortable together now. Stuff. He's off out to meet his girlfriend, he doesn't want to come because his girlfriend is worried about the whole... Do you know his girlfriend? She doesn't fully accept the old BNP thing. She worries that it might be ideologically wrong and that, you know, that Mark might get sort of killed as a result of his belief system. You know, which would be... You know, What's terrible. What's up? That is a real funny thing to say. What's a funny thing to say, Mark? Get out here and stand up for your race. What's, now, what, what's a funny thing to say? Well, no, it's just... You know, I mean, the way you put over just sounds ridiculous. What sounds ridiculous, sweetheart? What are you saying about my, what are you saying about my uh, girlfriend? No, she's worried about you getting kicked in, isn't she? She loves you. Basically, shoe so I can go and meet her. It's uh, day two now, and we're on our way to pick up uh, first Mark, and then his mate Chris, a fellow young BNP member. We're going to get him from the airport. He's coming over from Germany. Apparently, it's just a coincidence. So we're going to get them and then we're going to go and watch uh, England Argentina on the television together. Makes you almost worried about, like, you know, you sort of think that it's sort of, sort of any form of nationalism begins to be tinged with ugliness. It seems ugly to support England. I hope he's up bright and early, polished his boots, <laughs> combed his head. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Hello, well, how's it going? Yeah, pretty good. We phoned the airport. I think we're going to be all right on the. We'll be on time for Chris and everything. Brilliant. There's nothing to worry about. If you, you, you're all right to come. I'm, I'm ready. So we're at Leeds and Bradford Airport now. This is uh, day two. It's me and Mark. We're the original odd couple. I don't think there's sunglasses of any necessity. Really, so. Yeah, we're going to have to wear sunglasses. 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 Yeah, I'd rather wear these spectacles than your blinkers. You don't really agree with terrorism, do you? Not really. Political solutions. Political thing. solutions. No violence. I'm not a violent man, Russell. Yeah. I'm not a violent man. You're not a man. Well, <laughs> I think I'm a little bit more of a man than you. Do you? Yeah. Based on what? Well, based on many things. Such as? Well, I just think I am. I think I would have to take myself as a more of a more of a bloke, more of a man than you. I mean, look Based at your what? girly hair. Your... You're a princess. Oh. <laughs> well, that's you. You're a little sweet princess, a little frightened rabbit of a boy. <laughs> What's this map? Hong Kong, Kathmandu, Calcutta. Delhi. That's what Britain's going to end up looking like. One day, Britain will have a black prime minister. Good. <laughs> good. No, not good. Of course, it's good. Why is that good? Because we. This is a multicultural society. It should be represented. It'd be good to have a black prime minister. Well, you know, they don't need sort of. They, what, what difference would it make? As long as he's not an, like an, an idiot or a Nazi or something. Cool. Let's have a black prime minister. Well, I doubt it would be a Nazi if he's black. Well, I don't. Yeah, I, hope, I don't suppose you'd have him, would you? Right, mate. How's it going? Hello. Good. Hello. Hail. Hi. I'm Russell. Hi. Come out. Let's go get a can. How was your fight? Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Better 
so uh, BNP have got a few council seats, haven't they? Yes, three. But they've got no uh, seats in Parliament. No, not yet. Do you think that they will do? Well, I think I think within um, I think as a if immigrate basically there's a lot of British people who don't like immigration, yeah. Yeah. And there's that's going to grow the more immigration happens, mm. and the more the more you, the more immigrants come to the country, the more British people say, right, I've had enough. And basically, with 400,000 immigrants coming to the country every year, you're going to get a situation where more and more people are willing to vote for us. And there is the event, there is an inevitability of that's us like achieving. Fear. Of us, well, you can say what you want: fear, love, fear, hate. You can people put it in different ways. I say it's love for their people. They don't want to see their culture eroded. They love their culture, love their people. You say it's fear because they're scared of having their culture eroded. Some people say it's hate. They hate the people. I say it's love. You can interpret it in whatever you want. It's a, that's a that's a subject. Well, I think it's a object. fundamental thing, isn't it? Fear, the fear, and the fear well, and love. That's like, well fundamental, matey. I reckon. What, why don't you take a little bit? Like, why don't you, when you come to London, sort of think? Yeah. I just missed the call for you, you Nazi. I'm trying to call Chris to say, uh, <laughs> basically, we're in a different pub to what we said we were going to be. Uh, right. Cool. See, I just missed the call from someone that probably was quite fit. No, I've got a feeling from it. Just it made me a little winkle tingle. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to know about your winkle or its length. You know? <laughs> no interest in No. Not really my scene, mate. Yeah, no, mine. That's, 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 that's good, because you know what I mean? I really wouldn't want to be sitting this close to you if you were. Really? Don't like. If you're an AIDS monkey, I wouldn't really want to be sitting close to you. AIDS monkey? Yeah. What's an AIDS monkey? Uh, a bum man, a faggot. Uh, yeah. Homosexual? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not gay myself. But well, that's then another good. thing, like, you know, I don't, that's, that don't really matter if people are gay. Well, it's a pretty sickening thought having another bloke's dick shoved up your ass. Yeah, you don't have to do it, though, do you? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Someone's like, it's so infuriating, this trying to sort of think, oh, you're a nice lad, you know, like, you're a good kid, I stick up for you with the other teachers in the staff room, I say he's a bright boy, but then you crucifying kids and drawing swastikas everywhere, you're making it hard, Mark, for me to love you, I want to love you. Uh, that's quite amusing, should actually put that in. Yeah, exactly, should make that in. Go, say something racist, so it's extra worthwhile. Fuck off, black fellas! Oh, Bob Marley, he was rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> they want my favourite musician, you know what I mean? Who was he? Yes, you don't have to put musician in quote yeah. marks, but it's Bob Marley, he clearly was a musician. <laughs> your belief system permeates every aspect of your life, innit? You wouldn't sleep with black women, you don't like listening no, to black women. No, no, I didn't say, basically, I wouldn't sleep with black women because I don't find them physically attractive. I've never really seen like, an actual Afro-Caribbean woman. I've never seen a physically attractive Afro-Caribbean woman. Yeah, millions they've of got, them Halle Berry. They've got bubble lips, big, big noses. Beautiful lips, beautiful noses. Halle Berry, she's gorgeous, man. I don't think Halle Berry is beautiful, you know what I mean? I just don't find blacks attractive. I don't think a lot of lads do. I mean, you know, you might be able to point out, like, the old Latino, Chick that people find attractive, like Jennifer Lopez or whatever. And, and you know, yeah, they are. I like black women in general. Nice asses. Well, I disagree. Good I mean, energy. You know, I have seen Ricky Lake and I know what it's all about. Yeah. <laughs> you can't let Ricky Gro Lake. Grossly, grossly obese black women in bikinis thinking they look good. It's not. <laughs> It's like what I said. It's like what I said in the Guardian. You know, he said, "What about Lenny Henry? He's got a white wife." And I said, "Look, it's not ideal, but I wouldn't have sex with Dawn French, would you?" Yeah, she's got huge tits. Yeah, and she's she funny. Also, she'd also have to fart regularly for you to find her funny. <gasps> oh, oh, mate! <laughs> yeah, you should be so proud that like immigrants want to come and live in this country. I'm proud of my country, but I'm not proud that it's becoming a cesspit. I mean, a lot of people. You're not, that, you're comparing, that means you're comparing other. Uh, like ethnic minorities to excrement, mate, saying it's a cesspit. You're saying they're fecal matter. <laughs> Is this carling? No, mate, it's uh, they, they didn't have carling here. So we've got you. So we've got your pint of black person jury. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Tasty. <laughs> You think it doesn't matter? Think it doesn't <laughs> affect you? Think it's too late? <laughs> think again? Why is that in a farmer accent? It's just not necessary. <laughs> the truth at last. Yeah, the truth. No, it's not headed in. The truth at last. Then it shows you Hong Kong, Kathmandu, oh, Kingston, Calcutta, D. 
Dan Lee, yeah, on, we can meet at three if you want. Doesn't strike me as particularly truthful. We're in the original oak. I think you'll find that's London. That there's well, that's Norwich. Here we have Where Cornwall. Do you want to meet us? What's your thought Camp Excalibur then? What's all that about? Excalibur? Well, basically, Camp Excalibur is basically a weekend where young people get together, shoot each other with paintball guns, go canoeing, get a little bit beard up and have a good laugh. It's, it's affordable for any kids, it's only 10 quid. So where else can like working class kids come and do paintball and canoeing, abseiling, climbing and all that stuff? Have a good laugh for 10 quid for a weekend. Oh, that's Nowhere. a good thing. Why they, but yeah, we're helping black, people. Black though. kids want to go. Well, you know what I mean? They can't. I'm doing what I believe in, what are you doing? We're oh, just chatting to our friends. Can I be on this phone? Yeah, what's your name? I'm Martin. Martin. Martin, alright, good game today, eh? Hey, fucking hell. Game. See, we're doing a programme about sort of like, uh, what's it about? Racism. Racism? Well, we're not racist. Are you sure? Of course I can. No, yeah. alright. No, I'm not. Mark? Are you racist? <laughs> I'm the leader of the young BNP. Are you? Do you know what that is? National Front. Yeah, no, it's not national pretty front. much. It's same well, thing basically. Seriously? Yeah. Basically, BMP, yeah. yeah. all we want is like not for our culture and heritage to be eroded by like mass immigration or whatever. Some people want to integrate and be part of British culture, you know what I mean? They're here today. Others don't. Others go and riot in places like Oldham and Burnley, destroy the town. Yeah, but they've been here for no, yeah. yeah. I live in Errol's, yeah. mate, so it work, works both ways. And a lot of the English cause trouble for us who live in them, can Really? Yeah, of course they do. They come is over. That, that a lot that of national all, front. Do they? Yeah. Nationals yeah. come over, stirring up trouble well, in your community. Stirring trouble in my community. And then, obviously, they make like a front between that us. That makes it worse. That causes tension, of course it? it does. They come What's in, they What's shout about it, and they, they fuck off, and then leave it to the other white people, just like it's normal it's people, it's and leave us. And I've never had a, yeah. I'm a wrong a word with, with an Asian person in my life because I respect them and they respect me. Ah, just respect each other. Yeah, respect each and other. Then when, no and then when we have white people or vice versa coming in and causing trouble, then who's left in it end it there? The people of Aerials, not you. You're not from Aerials, I know that for a fact, so looking at you. You're not from Aerials, I'm from Aerials. And the people of Aerials have so, all lived together. So we've got, then you leave us to sort it out afterwards. Yeah, Bang that's out. bad news. So what, you brought these people over? That's what I'm saying, they, they make, make it worse. Mate. We didn't bring them over, Mark. Don't walk away, stand up for what you in. Come on, don't let us Stand up for what you believe in. They're living with it. Walk away because you're wrong. We're right. No, we don't need to argue away, We came up here to demonstrate that. We came up to demonstrate Chris, do not sign that release for Bring over whoever you want. Bring over Hitler himself. It don't matter. You ain't got nobody that can beat the truth. Come on, what's up? What's up? Mate, I'm not doing anything more with you. Go what? away. What's the matter? What's the matter? What's the problem, Mark? I didn't even understand what was going on. What happened? You just, the two blokes walked over and what do you know, they think it's wrong to be racist. I'm sorry about that, Mark. That's the world you're living in. What you believe is fundamentally wrong. You're going to come up against opposition. That's going to happen. If you want to believe in that stuff, mate, be prepared for the people around you to reject you. You may have got a little bit of local celebrity out of it, and congratulations, but let me tell you, this is the end of the road, because what you believe is wrong. Huh? What's up? What's up? Do they embarrass you? Are you embarrassed? I'm just, you just set us up with a couple of Muppets. They just I mean, walked over, they're nice fucking guys. I've never spoken to them before in my life. They walked over here, they live in Asian communities, they think that what you believe is wrong. That's going to happen, mate, because you, you know are I mean? wrong. Go home. Go back to London. Go home, Russell. What? 
just a neutral. Okay. Us that you wanted to come up here to make a politically neutral documentary. Nah, I can't be neutral, mate. It's too important. I'm not going to let you destroy you my so fucking you're... planet. I love people. Are we I'm not letting you. Your fucking planet? Yeah. Oh, shit, what? Well, you seem to be. You start to act so neutral and so sympathetic. You stand there and like start using abusive people. language, effing and blinding. Yeah, it's my language. What sort of English. rational debate is that? What start effing and blinding. Well, I'll speak, I'll say whatever. Like a common I want. peasant. <laughs> What's wrong with you? I'm a working class person, mate. It's the language I speak. I'm sorry if it offends you. Oh, you're really sorry working class. You oh, are. But, mate, honestly, all we want to do is save our way of life, yeah? Like, what our, is your way of life? Like, we just want to save our people. Like, we're going to be. The white race in this country is going to be extinct, you know what I mean? Somebody's got to do something. It's like saving the whale, yeah? Oh, there's thousands left, but unless someone starts now, yeah? Then that, that whale's going to... I think there'll always be white people, mate. Yeah, but... We'll always have Shakespeare, we'll always have everything we Well, I don't know, will we? It's, it's, it's touch and go, isn't it? Maybe, but maybe not. I just have a fear of... I just... Everything about Britain, I like it, and I just see it falling apart, you know? But it ain't mate, about race, mate. It ain't about ethnicity. It is about race. It's no, largely it's about, about no. race. I don't think it matters whether you're white or black, mate. It's of course like, you know, it matters. It's like, I am mate. proud to be white and I am proud to be British. Yeah, we should find I other am... things to be proud of, mate. But can you Such be proud as... of what you are, what you're capable of, I am what you white, believe in? I am British and name? I am proud of that. And by the way, there have been more white slaves throughout history than there have been Oh, black. I don't care what you say anymore. So the long, the tall and the short of the situation is this. Because I upset him yesterday, Mark, it says, like, oh, I won't talk to Russell anymore, I can't talk to him. I'm, inc I'm included, I may as well be Asian now. I'm included in his little segment of people that he doesn't want to talk to, doesn't want near him, and, you know, won't deal with. So, um, so uh, Matt and Will are going to go together to, to, to talk to him now, and I've got, like, just sort of for some questions that I, I'd like, sort of, you know, to have Mark answer. So, um... One thing that was really interesting, I was talking to uh, Mark's girlfriend, who seemed like a very sweet and normal girl, who didn't know that Mark was leader of the BM, uh, young BMP when she met him and was like, really upset when she found out from her friends. She told me, apparently, um, Mark he had a lot of trouble making friends, didn't really, you know, doesn't mix very easily with people. And when he met Chris, Chris, <laughs> Harry and Chris, uh, like, you know, that for, for Mark, that was a significant thing, that friendship. He, so the word she uses, Mark Hero worships Chris. I've got 110% um, respect for Chris Beverly. Uh, he's a top guy. He got me involved in the party. He is my best friend. Also, we met his sister. Um, I'd like to know, like, she's kind of cute, and this is hypothetical because I am, of course, an adult man and, you know, I've got some sort of moral code. Would you prefer, Mark, I wonder, if you, for your sister to go out with me, lovely Russell, or with, um, you know, an Asian or a black person or, you know, someone else outside of your limited brief of what is decent and correct? I think I'd rather she stay celibate for life. What would you do, I'd like to know, if the BNP disbanded or changed its immigration and race policy to be more inclusive? I'm loyal to the BMP because the BMP is the best option for Britain. But ultimately, more than anything, I'm loyal to my race and my nation. And if the BMP stops being the best party to represent that, of course, I would stand for the people. I said, I'm for the people. So, uh, what have I learned from this? I've learned that, you know, I don't really like Nazis very much. I can't get along with them. I can't, I've got no common ground. But like, uh, to learn about things, I suppose I should hold back. It was such a lovely day, we won the football, everyone was all together, most of the people we met were all sort of jolly and communal, and it just angered me. It angered me that he thought we were trying to stitch him up unfairly, and it angered me that his views are so harsh and so cruel and intolerant. And I reacted angrily, and to a degree, unprofessionally. So, I don't know, what would you have done? What would you have done? Having seen the film, do you think that we behaved in a responsible manner and, and what's your, what are your first impressions of the film? I think your arguments demolished those that came from the BNP. I think what was quite clear is that the slightest bit of argument about their issues, they couldn't defend their position. There is no substance to their argument and that's how they got to be treated and I think you did it remarkably well. Thank you very much.